Hello students, today's agenda is to check homework. We'll be applying the fundamental theorem of algebra and you will be able to do 1.6. Today's students will be able to understand the fundamental theorem of algebra and demonstrate it with quadratic formulas. And we might even apply it to linear and cubic. Okay, the fundamental theorem of algebra says that the highest degree, or meaning the, the biggest exponent, of a polynomial tells us the number of roots or solutions a polynomial has. And the solutions can be real roots, meaning a whole number, a negative number, so any, any integer. Or it can be a complex roots, meaning that it has a real portion to it and it has the imaginary, and they come in pairs. And not only that, but the pairs will always be conjugate, meaning that the sign for the imaginary portion changes. And they can also just be imaginary, meaning that they don't have the, the real portion, but just the imaginary portion of it. Um, and we're going to see also the linear, meaning degree one and degree degree two and degree three. And what I'm going to be using is desmos.com. You can just type this um, online and it will take you to this page on your phone. Uh, you just press graphing calculator and that's what comes up. And so I'm going to input this. I mean, you already know that to solve it or the solution is just to solve for x by canceling. And you get x is equals to negative 5. So that's just one solution. If it doesn't have an exponent in here, so if you see when there is no exponent in here, that means that there is a 1 in there. That's the degree of this polynomial or linear equation. And so that means that it's one solution. Now, if we were to graph it, um, x plus 5, look at the solution. The solution is x equals negative 5. That's where the line intersects the x-axis. Okay, so that's my solution. And that's a real component, a real solution, a real root, okay? Now, if you go to this number two, we can uh, solve it in different ways. We can use the factoring with the difference of squares, meaning x plus 6, x minus 6 equals 0. And you know that x will be the opposite uh, because this is a factor and this is another factor when we multiply to get zero one of them has to be zero How do I make this factor a zero? Well, x would have to be negative six the opposite of this so that negative six plus six is zero Or the other possibility is for this to be six So as you can see this is degree two and you have two solutions or two again. They are real roots now, for the demonstration, and I can keep that one in there. It will be in different colors. x squared, you press x, a to the second power, and minus 36. And if you notice, that's negative 6 and positive 6. You can even press the dots in there, and they'll show you the coordinates. You can remove the other one by pressing this graph and the graph disappears. This is a pretty cool resource online that you can get for free and go ahead and check it out. I forgot I was going to show you a different way. So if you have x squared minus 36 equals zero, uh, what we can do is cancel by adding 36 to both sides. This cancels, you get x squared equals positive 36. To get x by itself, you take the square root of both sides. This square root cancels the square, and now you only have x. But remember that when we have an equation and we take the square root of anything, you always get the positive and the negative of that. So it's positive or negative 6. Those are your two solutions or two answers. One is positive, one is negative. So that will be the same as these answers. Number three says x squared plus 5x plus 4. The degree is 2. That means that there are going to be two roots. And so again, we can solve this one. And so I can use Desmos again or, or actually factor it. Uh, so you have x squared plus 5x plus 4. And 
those are your two solutions. That's just the Y intercept. That's not part of the solution. But what we're looking is for the places where my graph will cross the X axis. Okay. So in this case, it says that it's negative four and negative one. Now let's go see. So you can either use the diamond. Uh, so we put four on the top and that's, we're looking for two factors of four and five. We're looking for two numbers that added equals the middle term, which is five. That's only when a is one. And so one times four is four. We open our parenthesis. I can't talk today. <laughs> so we open our parenthesis and put x, x plus one and plus four. And that will be equals to zero. Again, we have to make one of these two into zero. And how do I make this factor zero? Well, if I already have one, this needs to be negative one because negative one plus one equals zero. Or if we want to make the second factor zero, so since we have four in here, this is going to be negative four because negative four plus four equals zero. And if you notice, negative one, negative four, negative one, negative four, those are the two solutions. Again, this told me that I was going to get two solutions and these are two real solutions or roots. They're also called roots. Now here I want you to notice something. This is a perfect square and from a long time ago, previous lessons, we learned that if half of this is the same as the square root of that, then um, we have a perfect square. And so all you have to do is open your parentheses, put a square, put the X and four divided by two is positive two. We are going to keep this sign from here. Sometimes it will be negative. And so just to check to make sure that we are correct, what you can do is check with the A squared plus two AB plus B squared. That's the formula for perfect squares. And so what this tells me is that the first term, so these are equivalent to each other. Okay. It tells me that the first term will come from multiplying. If this is a, and this is B multiplying a square, meaning these times multiplying times itself, X times X, X squared. This term, which is this one right here is when we're multiplying B to the second power. B is positive two, positive two times positive two is positive four. But then the middle term is twice A times B. So twice A times B. And so two times X is two X, two X times positive two is four X. So there, so now let me just, so it looks cleaner. Let me bring it down in here equals zero. And so to solve for X, we're going to take the square root of both sides. This cancels in here and you'll get X plus two equals plus minus zero. Then we're going to subtract two and X is equals to negative two plus minus zero. That means you're not adding any value. And so look, at, I want you to have this in mind. When it touches and it bounces, <clears throat> that means that it has two solutions. But let me graph it in here so that you can see it. X squared plus 4X plus 4. When you have something like this, where the graph is, it comes, it touches a zero and then it bounces. Those count as two solutions or two roots. Okay. Um, I know this is tricky and that's why when you, uh, start graphing, there are some others that you will graph and you will see, but sometimes when it touches only once that represents more than one solution. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go into depth about that in this video. So these will be two real roots. Number five. So in here, 
Um, if we try to use the diamond, we're looking for a number that multiply equals positive two, but when we add them equals one. Well, there is nothing because the only two factors is one times two, and two plus one is not one. Um, and we cannot subtract them because this tells me that we're going to add them. Okay, so one plus two is three, not one. When we have that, what we're going to do is either use decimals or start with x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So negative b, so what are a, b, and c? We learned that a is always with x squared, b is always with x, so the coefficient of x squared and x is 1, and c will always be with no variable. So in this case, it's positive 2. We start substituting the negative states, b is 1, plus minus the square root of b squared, meaning 1 to the second power, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 2, divided by 2 times a, which is 1. And then we start simplifying. And we can do these two sections at the same time. So negative 1 plus minus 1 squared it means 1 times 1 is 1. And then minus 4 times 1 is 4. And whatever you get that, you multiply by the third one. So 4 times 2 is 8. 2 times 1 is 2. And so we get negative plus negative 1 plus minus the square root of negative 7 because 1 minus 8 is negative 7 divided by 2. In here we cannot get the square root of 7 but we can get the square root of negative. Remember that the square root of negative 1 is always i or the imaginary number and so in here we end up with two complex solutions because we have negative 1 plus minus the imaginary number, square root cannot be taken out, so we leave it in the, in the square root divided by 2, and then we cannot simplify anything else, so that's all. These are two complex roots. Again, when it says complex, it means that it has um, a portion that it's real and a portion that is imaginary. Now, how would that look on my graph? Let's take this one out and add a new one. And so x squared, x squared plus x plus 2, x squared plus x plus 2. With practice, I mean, you do it a little faster, but so if you notice, my x-axis is down here and my graph went up there. If I take away the plus 2, notice how it does have two real solutions, which is a 0, 0 and negative 1, 0. But because I'm adding 2, or just because sometimes your graph moves up, then or if it's negative a and reflected on the x-axis and it's uh, opening down and look below the x-axis then it won't touch the x-axis and so that's when you get the imaginary number okay the imaginary portion and imagine that it's crossing the x-axis that's what it means it does it doesn't cross the x-axis it doesn't touch at any point in here okay there it is the x-axis is not being intersected by that uh, graph. For number six, we're not going to solve it because that requires factoring. We'll do that in a separate video. But let me show you on Desmos how it would look. So it's going to be x. For a cubed or higher degrees, you will touch a to the b power and then put the power in there plus 5x squared, 5x squared plus 2x. 
and negative 2 more minus 2 and if you notice again those are your three solutions and these are three real roots okay Okay, so for your assignment, you will be defining, you're just going to be looking at the uh, highest exponent or the degree of the polynomial, and you're just going to write uh, how many roots you have. You don't need to specify if it's real or uh, complex or imaginary, and that's because we're not going to know in this lesson. Okay, so for your homework, it says how many roots do the following have? All you have to do is look at the at the highest exponent and you just put, for example, in here is going to be two roots. For number two, the highest exponent is six, so you have six roots. Very simple. For number three, even if you have some on the other side, you have three roots. In here, if there is no exponent, there is a chiquitito. So it's one root. And I know that you could solve some of these. Uh, number five, x to the 11th power equals zero. So that's going to be 11 roots. And here, the highest exponent is three. So you have three roots, meaning three solutions. Again, we don't know if the imaginary real or complex okay so some more identify the degree um it's very similar right if the degree the degree will be the highest exponent will be five in here we have to be careful what you want to do is just multiply the highest because this is multiplication if there is two parentheses that means that you're multiplying the in this case two trinomials get the highest from this one and the highest from and they might not be in descending order so just look for the highest exponent in each parentheses and so it's going to be x to the second power times 3x to the fourth power well remember that in multiplication we just add the exponent so the degree will be 6. in here x times x is x squared so the degree the highest degree will be 2 and finally, here, x times x again, also x squared, which is um, degree 2. Again, for your homework, all you have to do is find how many roots you have. Very simple. Later on, we'll be using that information and finding those by factoring. Okay? Um, that's all for this lesson. If you can, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe around here. This is the link to the entire unit, and here you will find the next lesson. Now you're able to do 1.6 and have fun.